glasses, plates, gold earrings, finger and toe rings, bowls and flasks. Officials said that of the 170,000 items initially believed missing, just 3,000 remain unaccounted for. Yeah, you think the 3,000 unaccounted for items that we stole from the Museum of Baghdad were toe rings and nose rings? I don't think so. I think we took some pretty significant artifacts. And of those 47 were main exhibit artifacts. Okay, First thing we did, raid the Museum of Baghdad a month after we found Gilgamesh. What did Yeshua said? What did he say? If, you, if they say he's in the desert, don't go there. Gilgamesh found in the desert. They say he's in the secret chambers. Don't believe them. December 21st, last year, 2010. My wife and I are late nighters. We stay up late at night. And a lot of times we go out for a walk, uh, like 2 o'clock in the morning. And we were out December 21st, the winter solstice. Everybody's talking about December 21st, 2012. Well, December 21st, 2010, we were walking, going out for a walk. Looked up in the sky at about 2, 2, 2 in the morning. And I saw the moon going into a full lunar eclipse for 72. Remember that number? 72? 72 demons and pentagrams and all that. 72 minutes, the moon went into a blood red lunar eclipse, floating over the shoulders of Orion, who is also Nimrod. Nimrod lost his head to Esau's sword, right? I looked up and I saw a decapitated blood red head, <laughs> looked like, floating over the shoulders of Orion at 2.22 in the morning. Oh, by the way, 2.22 in the morning, uh, Central Standard Time, is 3.22 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. 322 is the coveted number of the Skull and Bone Society of which both Bush family, but the whole Bush family, has been strongly associated with, as was Carrie. To a luminist, 322. What's that? A skull? A decapitated head on top of a pile of bones? 322. What was happening in Iraq at that very moment? Iraq had just announced the foundation of its newly formed government. And the entire planet, you could look this up for yourself, shook. The, the seismographic monitors that check earthquake activity around the world, every one of them went into the black that night. Today is December 21st, Tuesday, 2010, at 6.13 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we are looking at the live Internet seismic server, which is still recording a gigantic earth mist at all stations around the world. Now this began last night at approximately one to two hours before the eclipse. And originally I thought this may be a signature from the Iran earthquake that happened yesterday which was a 6.5 on the Richter. However, it continued all night and into today with a crescendo in Japan of a 7.4 and now as of, and I'll just click on any one of these, I mean all shaking through the roof but we'll just click on normals let's say and as of 2347 Greenwich Mean Time we still have a gigantic gigantic disturbance happening and this is not the Japan disturbance. This is some other anomaly that is showing up all around the world. Um, I have never seen anything like this in the time that looked at, at this data set. I mean, in Arizona, it's showing just off the chart. The, it, the evidence speaks for itself. And you can see the date timestamp, 12-21-2010. 1649 Mountain Standard Time, which is 2349 Greenwich Mean Time. So, just to prove that this is not showing up, and are either censoring this data or it's some some other kind of anomaly, is the current USGS World Global readout of earthquakes. And within the last hour, we had a 5.1 aftershock in Japan, which. Any geologist would be able to tell you, if you want to go back and look at prior data, you can see that a 5.1 does not show up as a huge off-the-chart earthquake all around the world at all the heliographs around the world. What's going on? I don't know. Makes you think, though. Washington, D.C., they have a statue coming out of the ground. It's called the Awakening in Washington, D.C. 
shows of God coming up, a bearded God coming up out of the ground. It's called the awakening. Could that be what we're really doing over there? First of all, let me just say, don't accuse me of, of not being patriotic. I'm third generation army. My dad was in Vietnam. My grandfather was in World War II and I served during Desert Storm for eight years. I was not in combat, but I was willing to and volunteered three times. I love my country, but I don't agree with everything this country does or that our leaders do. And I'm beginning to believe that the sole purpose of America has been what we're talking about here. It goes all the way back to the founding of this country and all the Illuminati and Freemasonry and all that stuff that's all over Washington, D.C. And things like this. And the fact that every president that we've had has been related to each other. Every single one of them. They all go back to the House of Plantagenet in, in England. Every single president. Is that a coincidence? What are the odds of every U.S. president being related, except for Martin Van Buren, all related to the same guy? We do not elect our presidents. Anyway, if it's true, then it makes sense when Yeshua said, wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. In the service, when I had my dress uniform on, or even my combat uniform, we were adorned with eagles from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. Eagles on our buttons, eagles on our badges, eagles on our patches, eagles everywhere. Eagle is also the symbol of almost every world empire going way back. Roman Empire, eagle. American, eagle. I don't know. I believe we are being set up for a great deception that has been set in motion thousands of years ago. And all of it's going to come into play. Will these guys have something to do with bringing this guy back? I don't know. I don't believe these guys are from Orion or from the Pleiades or Arcturus or, you know... I believe this is repackaged Genesis 6 activity. This is fallen angel stuff. I've written extensively about it. I have a book that's in the works right now. It's called Babylon Rising. Uh, and the first shall be the last. It's got about 300 pages to it to, so far. A lot of pictures in it, so it's, it's not all text, 300 pages. It's available online. And we've prepared a special DVD for this presentation. Uh, because this is all my wife and I do is we are trying, if this is true, if anything that I'm saying here is true, we're trying to wake people up because there's going to be a deception that the scriptures say it's going to be so powerful that even the elect can be deceived by. I believe this is the elephant that I've wandered into <laughs> kind of blindly in the jungle and doing my best to describe it. This disc has 50 hours worth of audio teaching on it. Most of it's mine and I've got a few others on there too. Um, it's got, uh, what, 20 hours of video and a whole lot of other stuff on there. Uh, I wish I could give this stuff away for free. I really do. I'm doing these seminars and stuff for free. But we're basically just asking people that if you believe in what we're talking about or in the mission that we have to try to get this out to people, we just ask that you support us. If we were in the desert trying to bring the message of Christ to people in the desert, would you give us a bottle of water for the day just to help us? That's essentially what we're asking for, a dollar a day. $30 a month, $33 is a subscription package that we're putting together. If, and you can cancel at any time. <laughs> or if all you want to do is a one-time contribution, we ask for a 50, minimum of $50 uh, to help us go to this convention that we're about to go to and some of the more traveling that we have to do. We also have other things. Uh, if that's a little bit too much for you, we have... Um, uh, just the audio series of me reading the blogs. I've, I've posted these online as blogs. I'm reading them, so if you can stand listening to me for <laughs> like 20 hours, <clears throat> I, we have that for uh, $15, honey, and a few other teachings for, for about the same amount of money. So just in closing, I want to show you something just I think that it, it will encourage you. Regarding Zeus, remember Zeus? We, we talked about Zeus being uh, the devil. There's a History Channel special that played recently and I was amazed at what they said when they, when they wrapped up the video about there, there was a series called The Clash of the Gods and uh, I'll just let them it's like a two minute video this is the story of Zeus Greek mythology's supreme commander to us it's a myth but to the ancients it was reality some Greeks believed Zeus was the one true god and that nature's worst catastrophes were a sign of his wrath. This is the myth of Zeus.
In the myth, Zeus has held onto power in the face of strong opposition. But there is one more challenger he didn't count on. Jesus Christ. In the first century AD, his message would take the world by storm and dethrone Greece's dominant god. In antiquity, there was no more powerful force than Zeus, except for one. How awesome is that? On the History Channel. If you think about the significance of that, though, Zeus ruled the ancient world for 3,000 years. 3,000 years until a seemingly insignificant individual showed up from Nazareth that completely toppled his regime. When you look into all this stuff, it can become pretty scary. That gets me excited. What did Yeshua say? He came to destroy the works of the devil. Thank you.